بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم هنتكلم على الجروس ريستريكتد فيتس because we have put three cases there was a lot of debate in the comments and some people who are not working so much obstetric um, have inquiries many inquiries about so I will talk a short talk on the gross restricted fetus. Uh, the gross restricted fetus or fetal gross restriction, in the old times, they used to say IUGR, intrauterine gross retardation. But nowadays, we, we named it fetal gross restriction. A fetus that is abnormally small for gestational age. What is the fetal gross restriction? It is a fetus which is abnormally small for gestational age often due to complication of placental insufficiencies, uh, insufficiency in the most cases. The term small for gestational age is used to describe a neonate whose weight falls below the 10th percentile for gestational age and maybe not all, in all cases it is abnormal. Sometimes it is constitutionally normal small for date and when you ask the mother, she said that all my babies, they are small in size. Uh, fetal growth uh, restriction are an increased risk of perinatal morbidity and mortality, including in utero demise, uh, brain injury, fetal distress, neonatal hypothermia, hypoglycemia, hyperbilirubinemia, and decreased immune function. When the growth restricted fetus is diagnosed prenatally and the close fetal monitoring is instituted, including non-stress tests by physical profile, umbilical artery doubler, the neonatal outcome is better than the neonates born uh, and not diagnosed the prenatal. So the small for date or the small for gestational age, those who are constitutionally small, when I find a baby completely normal, normal doubler indices, normal biophysical profile, we can say that this fetus is a small for date but it is normal. Maybe miscalculation from the mother, maybe constitutionally small, uh, and as uh, this baby is putting his hand on his uh, head, uh, because we didn't know. Sometimes we didn't know. But since the baby is active, good by physical profile, normal doubler indices, we consider it small for date. Now what to do in these fetuses? We can follow up. If you follow up, for example, after one month and you find that that baby has grown one month, then it is normal. So uh, we, we follow up by serial ultrasound. <coughs> Since the other uh, things normal and also the uh, amniotic fluid normal, okay? Uh, what are the causes of fetal growth restriction? We have many causes of fetal growth restriction, either due to maternal causes. Mainly, the two important are hypertension and the diabetes. The most two important are, are hypertension, either chronic hypertension or pregnancy-induced hypertension. Uh, also, cyanotic heart disease, uh, women with hemoglobinopathies and autoimmune disease. Uh, protein calorie malnutrition, those who are smoking, uterine malformations, hemophilia and prolonged high attitude exposure, all of these may cause, I, I have uh, one uh, colleague, she has repeated abortion due to prolonged high attitude exposure. Uh, placental or umbilical causes, mainly it occurs in the twin pregnancy, like uh, multiple gestations or twin to twin transfusion syndrome, uh, but it may occur also with placental abnormalities like chronic abruption, placenta previa, abnormal cord insertion as in the velamentous insertion of the cord, and cord anomalies. Sometimes, I, and I have a lecture on the cord before, you can find it on the YouTube, uh, that when the coiling of the cord is less, uh, it is more liable that this baby may be growth restricted. And also fetal causes of uh, fetal growth restriction, including chromosomal disorders, and this is very important, and the congenital malformations. So we must do screening to every part in the fetus by 3D, by 3D ultrasound or by 4D ultrasound in order to detect, to, to exclude the chromosomal disorders and the congenital anomalies. 
Then the first thing that to highlight that we have a gross restricted baby is by the fetal biometry. When you do a fetal biometry, you find that the fetal weight is below normal. How we can assess the fetal weight? Usually we have four standard ultrasound measurements, the biparietal diameter, the head circumference, the abdominal circumference, and the femur lens. And always your machine will not uh, calculate the fetal weight except if you take the measurements that you want. Uh, the pathological causes of fetal growth restriction, uh, as we have just said, but this is more categorized, more um, uh, maternal, fetal, or placental, uh, and the significant overlap of these entities. May, maybe we have more than one entity, maybe maternal and placental at the same time, so we may have more than one uh, cause for the fetal growth restriction. How to assess? A fetus with gross restriction. A complete ultrasound evaluation should include the documentation of fetal movements and that the biophysical profile. So we must do biophysical profile for this fetus. Second, assessment of the amniotic fluid. The presence of oligohydramnios is a frequent finding in gross restricted pregnancies caused by placental insufficiency and can be screened by measuring the amniotic fluid index uh, some measure the vertical, uh, the, the maximum vertical uh, pocket, but to me, I, I depend on the amniotic fluid index better. Growth restricted fetus have a relatively high incidence of structural and genetic abnormalities, and then, as we have said, anatomical survey is recommended. Serial ultrasound for evaluation of the fetal growth and Doppler. Uh, volusimetry are used to guide pregnancy management decision, including the timing of delivery. So, when we have a lot of debate in the comments on the doubler, it's not the doubler by itself. Not only the doubler that that we say we can do uh, comp uh, immediate delivery or we can stay and follow. Not only by the doubler itself, but also by the um, biometry and if, if you do serial ultrasound and find this baby did not increase at all in size so there's no need to stay inside so not only by the doubler but also by the biophysical profile by the uh, evaluation of the biometry and by assessment of the amniotic fluid then came the role of doubler what is the role of doubler in the, in the fetal gross restriction to identify the vascular bed resistance, and that's mainly in the maternal cause, like in cases of diabetes and hypertension. So we do the uterine artery, and the uterine artery uh, is very useful up to 24 weeks. We can use the uterine artery instead of the umbilical, because the uterine artery gives us a hint about the flow of blood to the, to the placenta from, from, from the uterine artery itself. And then came the umbilical artery, and then to identify, which is the main, the umbilical artery is the gold standard, is the main vessel that we can assess uh, by the IUGR. But in combination with other vessels, what are the other vessels? The MCA. The middle cerebral artery uh, can be used to identify the fetal adaptation. Is the fetus adapted to the small amount of blood that is coming from the placenta or not? So we, used, we, we do the uh, middle cerebral artery. And then to identify if this fetus has cardiac decompensation, if we find that the middle cerebral artery starts to be low resistance, then the next step is to, do, to assess if there is cardiac decompensation or not. So we can do the ductus venosus and the umbilical vein. So this is the scheme how to do Doppler in cases of growth restriction. Uh, the doubler in the in, in again in measuring the placenta resistance we do the umbilical artery uh, we depend many many of the literature they depend mainly on the pulsatility index but but for me i depend on the resistivity index and find it go well uh, if i depend on the resistivity index but uh, from the literature and from the many from many studies they found that the pulsatility index being Measuring the average velocity is better than the resistivity index. 
Uh, so in the placental resistance, if we found the umbilical artery pulsatility index more than 95th percentile, then there is resistance to flow. Uh, increasing hypoxia, we will find that the flow, the, the fetal, the, the flow to the fetal middle cerebral artery, the pulsatility index will be below the fifth percentile. Uh, in the presence of acidosis, will be start problems with the venous system, the ductus venosus and the uh, umbilical vein. And this is late, and this is late. And one of the comment, we, we did not stay to this, uh, to this part. When you find the changes mainly in the umbilical artery, then you must follow the decompensation of the baby in the middle cerebral, and then after you can take a decision according to the fetal gestational age. The cerebral placenta ratio, this is very important also, um, and sometimes it, it gives us a better um, assessment. If you found the umbilical artery borderline and the middle cerebral artery borderline, then you can assess by the ratio. If it is less than one or below the fifth percentile, then this is an ominous sign. A fetal arterial doubler that we say and we highlight the most uh, vessel that we need to, to see and assess is the umbilical artery. The umbilical arterial circulation is normally a low impedance circulation. What is meant by low impedance? That there is always and always there is high diastolic flow. With an increase in the amount of end diastolic flow with advancing gestation, umbilical artery doubler we form reflect the status of the placental circulation and the increase in end diastolic flow that is seen with advancing gestation is a direct result of an increased number of the tertiary system. By time, the tertiary system in the placenta starts to increase and increase and by that it will decrease the resistance and so throughout gestation the umbilical artery waveform start to start an increase in the end diastolic flow until the end of gestation. The problem, the diseases that obliterate the small muscular arteries in the placental tertiary system will lie with progressive decrease in the end diastolic flow in the umbilical artery waveform. Uh, and then sometimes, then it will become absent and then with reversed flow, which is a drastic condition. And this occurs, as we say, in the most common that we see diabetes and hypertension. This is the umbilical artery we form. The, as we say, it is a low impedance flow. There is high diastolic flow, low impedance flow. The doubler wave form of the umbilical artery can be obtained from any segments along the umbilical cord. In all the times, they say that we must measure at the placental side and at the fetal side. Now we can measure in any, um, in any part of the cord. But please, if you measure once and you find there is high resistivity, then try to measure in other loops. Because sometimes one of the loop is just coiled upon itself and it is just coiled so there is high resistance in this loop only. So please, if you find high resistivity, please measure in many loops of the cord in order to ensure that there is low resist uh, high resistivity or not. The waveform obtained from the placental end of the cord show more end diastolic flow than that obtained from the abdominal uh, cord insertion. Uh, Doppler, this is followed by alteration in the venous circulation, including the ductus venosus. Uh, a fetus with severe gross restriction first demonstrate changes in the umbilical artery as decreased end diastolic flow. Uh, then in the middle cerebral artery, as increased end diastolic flow. And this is followed by alteration in the venosus circulation, like the ductus venosus, decreased forward flow during the atrial systole. And the umbilical vein, even it may form a pulse-style flow in the umbilical vein, and this is also a drastic sign. A doubler ultrasound of the ductus venosus and middle cerebral artery provide information about the hemodynamic status of the gross restricted fetus. So they are important also. And we assess the umbilical artery, but we can also assess the middle cerebral and the ductus venosus to provide information about the hemodynamic status of the gross-restricted fetus. 
This is the <coughs> umbilical artery. <coughs> Note here the wave. It's, it's even reversed. It is even reversed wave. So this is, is not a good condition for this fetus. Although it is gestational age 27 weeks only. So it's very bad condition for the baby. And here, the middle cerebral, RI is 0.68, start to decrease, but not so much decreasing, and the PI 1.4. So here, there's also start, um, hypoxia start to occur, and still the baby 20, 27 weeks gestation. What to do in this case? We must wait and see, we must uh, give treatment, and then follow up every one week until uh, we can know that, that the baby that can grow more or not. And as we see here from the, from the scan, that there is even anhydramis. So this is not a favorable condition, but we have to wait and see until the, uh, the last. The last. <coughs> this is the um, Doppler. Uh, the strongest and most substantial as association uh, is the abnormal umbilical artery doubler. Uh, velocimetry was present, defined as pulsatility index greater than 95%, or absent or reversed in the diastolic flow. This is not reversed, of course, this is the, but just the wave is on the other side. Uh, here, the pulsatility index is 0.79 and the RI point. Five, three, so this is within a normal range. This was the case we have put in the first time. Uh, sorry, I, I was mistaken because I read the pulsatility index as the resistivity index, but in this case, the condition of Doppler is not so bad. <coughs> this is the abalacal, and this is the measures. Yeah, here, if we get the Doppler, in a case which as IUGR, you, uh, you, you remember the case, she was 34 weeks instead of being 39. Type here, the RI of the umbilical artery 0.53 and the PI 0.79. What about for this gestational age? Here, if we see for the, for the gestational age of this case, then here what we have? We have within normal range still. Yeah, but we're still here within normal range. Uh, then came the ductus venosus. Ductus venosus sometimes it is very difficult to get, especially if there is oligohydramnios or the position of the fetus. But if you get, we have many findings in the ductus venosus. First, you must know the normal appearance of the wave of the ductus venosus. This is the S wave, the systolic, uh, the ventricular systole, and then the ventricular diastole, and then the atrial systole, which is the A wave. This is the atrial systole. So this is very important to know the different parts. If you find the A wave is not present, absent A wave means that there is abnormal late diastolic filling. If a start cardiac compromise, start cardiac compromise. But this is absent A wave. Then there may be reversed A wave. But this is the A wave. This is absent A wave, and this is reversed A wave. If we have reversed A wave, this is abnormal lead diastolic filling. Then decreased V wave. The V wave. wave uh, the, you know here this is the V wave. The V wave start to decrease, and the D wave here is. Uh, decreased also, the D and V waves decrease, and with reversed A wave, this is abnormal end systolic, and this is يعني, more grave results, abnormal end systolic and whole diastolic filling. And then when we found the wave of the ductus venosus like that, the M-shaped uh, ductus venosus, if we decreased V wave and absent A wave, then we have abnormal end systolic and late diastolic filling, uh, if we have decreased V and D wave also, then we have abnormal end systolic and early diastolic filling. So this is uh, how to see the abnormal, not only reversed, not only reversed wave, 
But if you find the changes in the appearance of the normal waveform of the ductus venosus, then we are starting to be compromised, cardiac compromise starts to occur. <clears throat> then came the umbilical vein, uh, decrease in volume, flow, and pulsations. Uh, this means that this baby is become compromised, uh, the, the vascular pattern is compromised. So the umbilical vein is the last to see. Most of us, we didn't see the umbilical vein, but if you see the umbilical vein in this drastic condition, then, <coughs> uh, then you will find that there's a pulsatile flow in it and a decreased volume flow. Uh, but in practice, we didn't reach that level. When we found that there is changes in the umbilical artery, especially if there is reversed flow, there is no need to do others. If there is reversed flow in the umbilical artery, then we can go to delivery one uh, immediately. Yeah, yeah, I said to the patient, to go to your obstetrician immediately. Uh, if we found that there is borderline indecent, then we try to do other findings. But when you find changes in the umbilical and in the middle cerebral and in the cerebral placenta ratio, then we, we don't need to do the ductus or the umbilical vein because if we reach that level, uh, the prognosis will be bad. Uh, how to get, then get to the uterine artery? Did the uterine artery, I used to not to see the uterine artery for many years, but uh, many, many research said that the uterine artery can be a predictor of preeclampsia. And the uterine artery is very, very important in the early pregnancy failure. When you find small for gestational age fetus in the early pregnancy, mostly the problem in the uterine artery, especially in the autoimmune diseases, like systemic lupus and the, and the autoimmune phospholipid syndrome and so on. How to get the uterine artery? The uterine artery, here are the iliac vessels, and you get the uterine artery crossing on the iliac vessels like that. And this is the normal uterine artery in 26 weeks gestational age. There is no notch. And there is high diastolic flow with RI.5, will be I.78. So this is the normal uterine artery. Uh, this is normal uterine artery in the first trimester, then start the diastolic flow to increase in the early second trimester. And by the late second and third trimester, this is the appearance. Here there is no notch and there is high diastolic flow. So if we say that this is at 20 weeks, this is normal and this is abnormal. There is notch and there is low end diastolic flow. So, in assessment of the fetal well being, especially in the third trimester, usually when we have small uh, fetus in the early trimester, um, in the early first trimester or second trimester, uh, or early second trimester, it will be uh, a poor prognosis. But if it is after 32 weeks, it will be relatively good prognosis if we uh, get a scheme for assessment of these feeds. Uh, we can do conventional and Doppler ultrasound. Uh, any of the following. If there is no growth in two weeks, as I have just said, if you do ultrasound and after two weeks you do another ultrasound, you find that the measures are not increasing at all. You have no growth in two weeks. Or fetal weight, fetal or uh, fetal weight or abdominal circumference less than 10 percentile, because the abdominal circumference there is uh, some sort of shift uh, due to, in order that the fetal um, head sparing compensation. Uh, we find that the neoglycogenesis in the liver becomes less, and so the liver becomes smaller in size, and so the abdominal circumference becomes smaller in size, and this is what we call the asymmetrical uh, IUGR, the asymmetrical gross restricted fetus, due to com shift compensation of the, of the fetus in order to manage with this drastic condition. And the presence of oligohydramnus. What to do next? We must uh, correlate with the umbilical artery results. Consider that with the middle cerebral and with the ductus venosus doubler results. If we have normal diastolic flow, then mon monitor until term. Since the, the, the doubler is normal, we can monitor until term, even if the presence of oligohydramnus 
and small uh, for date feeds. If we have reduced diastolic flow, we increased uh, systolic diastolic ratio, we can monitor, but more frequent. If we have absent or reversed flow of the umbilical artery, then the management depends upon the gestational age and we should consider delivery. But still, we, uh, we want the lungs to be mature. And if, it, if it's so small in size, for example, 26 weeks and the fetus is only 500 grams, there is no possible possibility that he, uh, it will live after delivery. Uh, this is the uh, scheme. Uh, management of delivery plans. Once the fetal growth restriction has been detected, the management of pregnancy should be on the surveillance plan that. We have to maximize the gestational age while minimizing the risk of neonatal morbidity and mortality. If we can do so, it will be better. This should include corticosteroid administration when, when at all feasible based on the monitoring and delivery strategies. So if we diagnose gross restricted fetus at more than or less 32 weeks, then we can do umbilical artery doppler and biophysical profile weekly. If we have reversed end diastolic flow, then deliver. If you have absent end diastolic flow, uh, if more than 33 th weeks, we can deliver. If less than 33 weeks, we can do the biophysical profile daily in order to monitor. And once there is abnormality, we will deliver also, or in the presence of oligohydramnios, we will deliver. Uh, normal umbilical artery, khalas, will deliver at, at term, even if it is a small for gestational age fetus. Normal doubler and oligohydramnios we have to follow follow up in the presence of oligohydramnios and sometimes many uh, f females have oligohydramnios with normal doubler indices and we follow but more frequently uh, if we can do every week weekly also this will be better until we found any change in the doubler indices then we will shift to delivery this is the protocol i said but uh, as i said thank god we are not those who take the decision. This, this uh, management and, and delivery planning, uh, but we have to guide. We have to guide. Yani when we found adverse uh, doubler indices, like reversed flow in the, in the umbilical artery, I must tell the, um, the, the female, go now to your obstetrician, and sometimes if I have the number of her obstetricians, I phone her. Uh, <clears throat> And this is reversed flow in the umbilical artery, which is a drastic condition. And this is a, the middle cerebral artery, normal flow in the middle cerebral artery. This is the middle cerebral artery showing starting high end diastole. And here the RI start to decrease, but still within normal uh, limits. Uh, one more um, teaching point for the oligohydramnios. When you measure the oligohydramnios, sometimes it is measured wrongly due to the presence of cord. The cord, when I'm uh, when I, I not putting doubler, it will be hypoechoic. So you measure this pocket as if it is a pocket, but no, it is a cord. So you just measure only the pockets here. It's very, very, very low. And this is marked oligohydramnios in this case. Uh, I think this is the same case, marked oligohydramnios, but here we have normal umbilical artery flow, the PI 0.6 and the uh, systolic diastolic ratio 1.8 and RI 0.46, so this is normal umbilical artery flow, and here the middle cerebral still normal, so we have still normal flow, although there is marked oligohydramnios, so we can wait and see if the patient, but here, <clears throat> this fetus is 39 weeks, so I think they will be, uh, it will be delivered. Um, what about this case? <clears throat> this is another case. Uh, here we have growth restricted fetus because it is below the 10th percentile weight. Uh, and all the measures is below 2.3%. So this is a gross restricted fetus. Then when we do 
um, the amniotic fluid assessment it's oligohydramnios four centimeter so this is a gross restricted fetus with oligohydramnios then we will rush to what Doppler this is the umbilical artery what is here the umbilical artery the RI 0.7 and the PI 1.5 go to the reference here the reference for 26 weeks gestational age the PI here is within normal range and the RI also within normal range although it is the 95th percentile but it is within normal range so we have borderline indices of the umbilical artery then we do uterine because she's 26 weeks so we can do the uterine also the uterine is normal and then we do the middle cerebral but the middle cerebral has relatively low RI although the umbilical is on the upper limit of normal but here the, the PI of the middle cerebral artery is high so there is a starting anoxia and in the fetus and decompensation uh, this answering uh, uh, some colleague who said to me if I do umbilical artery only that's enough but I think we must do the middle cerebral also in order as we say in the previous slides in order to see the hemodynamics of the fetus itself then what it's 26 weeks so even I cannot deliver at that at that age it's um, I think uh, it was about 500 uh, 500 grams okay back to the causes what is the cause in this case this is the fetus oligohydramnios this is the cord I, I, as you see here this is the cord don't measure the, this pocket because it's full uh, get up, upwards but if the cord is seen in the pocket don't measure it as a pocket of fluid okay what is seen here there is something in the placenta so this is a placental cause of insufficiency here the placenta there is a hematoma retroplacental hematoma the patient is not complaining that's, that was strange that the patient is not complaining it is a large retroplacental hematoma and so the cord is compromised due to that and when you put doubler this is the hematoma and there is no flow inside so this is a large abruption with retroplacental hematoma and this is the cause of uh, of high resistivity in the umbilical cord so in this case what to do we have to wait and see because the baby is so small we cannot deliver now and this hematoma may resolve by time and the uh, umbilical cord returns to normal uh, indices so just wait and see uh, thank you and if you have any comment you can uh, we can uh, say, uh, said or highlight another uh, thing inshallah in uh, more lectures Thank you.